Good morning, children. Let's move on to the fourth chapter in English. Try Anti Wanti Gongola. That's this is a poem by C. J. Dennis. Now, Clarence Michael James Stanislaus Dennis, better known as C. J. Dennis, eighteen seventy six to nineteen hundred and thirty eight, was an Australian poet known for his humorous poems, especially the songs of a sentimental bloke, published in the early twentieth century. Now, let's. Move on to the central idea of the poem. The poem is an imaginary one, not a real story. So, this is a poem by C. J. Dennis, the poet, and which is actually um, his own creation. It tells about an insect which is nothing but the poet's imagination. Here he talks about the insect and which is nothing but his own imagination. He is aware that the name of this insect is very difficult to pronounce and spell but he hopes one will learn it eventually. Now if you try pronouncing it it's very very difficult for you to pronounce but the poet thinks that people may somehow learn it at some point of time or they might even be able to pronounce it later on after giving the reader such a lot of description about the insect he confesses that he hasn't seen the insect either so this poem deals with a lot of you know description about the insect which of course later on he says he too hasn't seen here is the poem there is a very funny insect that you do not often spy and it is not quite a spider, and it is not quite a fly. It's something like a beetle, and a little like a bee, but nothing like a woolly grub that climbs upon a tree. Its name is quite a hard one, but you will learn it soon, I hope. So try, try, try anti wanty, try anti wanty, gongo love. It lives on weeds and leaves and has a funny face. Its appetite is hearty and its manners are disgrace. When first you come upon it, it will give you quite a scare. But when you look for it again, you find it is not there. And unless you call it softly, it will stay away and mock. So try, try. Try anti wanty, try anti wanty gongola. It trembles if you tickle it or tread upon its toes. It's not an early riser, but it has a snobbish nose. If you sneer at it or scold it, it will scuttle off in shame. But it purrs and purrs quite proudly if you call it by its name and offer it some sandwiches of wax and soap. So try, try, try anti wanty, try anti wanty gongola. But of course, you have not seen it, and I truthfully confess that I haven't seen it either, and I don't know its address. For there isn't such an insect, though, there really might have been, if the trees and grass were purple and the sky was bottle green. It's just a little joke of mine, but you will forgive, I hope. Oh, try, 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 anti wanty, try, anti wanty, gongola. 
Now, here is the picture of all the insects that are insect that is try anti anti gongolup may look like. Now, as the poet says here, it doesn't look like a spider. It looks like a, you know, this is the bug and this is a caterpillar here, the woolly grub and this is the fly. So children, these are all insects and even the caterpillar that you see. So how many of you like insects? I know that's very scary. You know, just think of the caterpillar, the woolly caterpillar. You know, it really scares you, is it not? Now, let's come to the explanation of the poem here. There is a very funny insect that you do not often spy. And it is not quite a spider and it is not quite a fly. Here, the poet C.J. Dennis talks of a funny little insect that we always do not see. For it doesn't look like a spider or even a fly. It is something like a beetle and a little like a bee, but nothing like a woolly grub that climbs upon a tree. So, here the poet says that it resembles more or less a beetle or even a bee, but it is never like the woolly grub. The woolly grub here refers to the larva of the insect that climbs upon a tree. The other woolly grub climbs upon a tree. Its name is quite a hard one, but you learn it soon, I hope. So the poet says, it is very, very difficult. The, the name of the insect is very, very hard. But the poet feels that we will learn it soon. So try, 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 anti wanty, try, anti wanty, gongo up. So here, the poet has broken this a big name. It's a very, very hard one, difficult one to pronounce. So the poet here has broken it into smaller words so that we can pronounce it. So let us come to the rhyming pattern. Now look at the first line. There is a very funny insect that you do not often spy. Now spy and go to the next one. It is not quite a spider and it is not quite a fly. Here, spy rhymes with fly. So, we can give this as A and A. Next, look at this third line. It is something like a beetle and a little like a bee. So, we will give this as B. Let us name it as B. Look at the fourth line. But nothing like a woolly grub that climbs upon a tree. Here, B rhymes with tree. So, we give it as B. Its name is quite a hard one, but you'll learn it soon, I hope. So, hope again. We give it C. So, try, try. Try, anti wanti. Try, anti wanti. Gongola. So, hope. Gongola. Name it as C. So, the rhyming pattern is A, A. B, B, C, C. Now, let's come to the rhyming words. Here, spy rhymes with fly, B rhymes with tree, and hope rhymes with try, anti, one, t, bongo, love. Understood, children, the rhyming pattern and the rhyming words? Okay. Now, let's come to the figure of speech. Look at the line here. It is something like a beetle and a little like a bee. Got it? So, here the figure of speech is a simile because the insect is compared to the beetle and the bee. Now, we call this 
as literary devices. Now we have already done rhyming words and rhyming scheme. Let us come to this. What is a rhyming word then? Words that have the same ending sound. We have already seen that. Spy, fly. Okay, so spy and fly rhyme the same way. So we call this as rhyming word. Next, come to the rhyming scheme. The rhyming scheme, a pattern of rhyme that comes at the end of each rhyme line. In the poem, the rhyme scheme is A A B B C C. I hope children you understood this rhyming scheme. Right. Next come to rhyming words. We have already done that. So here the rhyming words are spy, fly, bee, tree, hope, try, auntie, wanty, gongo, love. Now, the figure of speech. The figure of speech here is simile. He is sometimes like a beetle and a little like a bee. Here, the insect is compared to a beetle and a bee. Let's move on to the second stanza. It lives on weeds and leaves and has a funny face. Its appetite is hearty and its manners a disgrace. So, what does it live on? It, the insect lives on weeds and leaves and it's got a very, very funny face. Its appetite is hearty, which means it loves to eat. And its manners are disgrace, of course. This insect is very, very mannerless. It doesn't know how to behave. When first you come upon it, it will give you quite a scare. So the first time you see the insect, you'll be scared to look at it. But when you look for it again, you find it is not there. Again the second time, when you look for it around, you're not going to see it in the same place. And unless you call it softly, it will stay away and mop. Of course, if you are going to call it very, very softly, it will stay away and mop. That is, it won't show your face, show its face to you. It will feel very, very unhappy if you don't call it softly. So, try, try, try anti wanti try anti wanti gongola. Let's come to the rhyming scheme. Let's move on to the first line. It lives on weeds and leaves and is a funny face. Its appetite is hearty and its manners are disgrace. So, face, disgrace, a, a. Let's move on to the third line. When first you come upon it, it will give you quite a scare. But when you look for it again, you find it's not there. Scare, there, both rhyme, so that is B, B. Then, and unless you call it softly, it will stay away and mop. So try, try, try anti wanti, try anti wanti, gongola. So mop. Try and tea on tea It's C. So the rhyming pattern or scheme is A A B B C C. What about the rhyming words? Rhyming words here on the stanza are face, disgrace, scare, they, mop, try and tea on tea gongola. Now, literary device. I've given here. So the rhyming scheme is A A B B C C and the rhyming words are face disgrace, scare, they, mop, triantiwanti, anti, bongola. So children, I think you would understood how to find out the rhyming scheme as well as the rhyming words. Let's move on to the third stanza. It trembles if you tickle it or tread upon its toes. 
It's not an early riser, but it has a snobbish nose. So, if you tickle the sunset, or you tread or step upon its toes, it trembles. It's not an early riser. It doesn't rise up early. And it has a snobbish nose. If you sneer at it or scold it, it will scuttle off in shame. So, if you are going to scold this insect or if you are going to sneer at it, it will run away in shame. Scuttle, run away. But it purrs and purrs quite proudly if you call it by its name. So, when you call it by its name, it purrs and purrs very, it's very, very proud of itself and it purrs and purrs. It's very happy if you call it by its name and offer it some sandwiches of wax and so. And if you offer it some sandwiches of wax or even so, it is very, very happy and it purrs quite proudly. And so try, 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 Auntie Wanty, Pongola. Now, let's move over to the rhyming pattern here. Now, toes, nose. We can give that A, A, shame, name, B, B, soap. Try, Auntie Wanty, Pongola, C. So, the rhyming scheme is... A A B B C C. Now, what about the rhyming words? The rhyming words here toes, nose, shame, name, soap, tranty, wanty, bongola. Let's come to the literary device and the stanza. Let us look at the rhyming scheme. The rhyme scheme here is A A B B C C. What about the rhyming words? Now, toes, nose, shame, name, soap, try anti, wanty, gongola. Now, let's come to the figure of speech. Look at this line. If you sneer at it or scold it, it will scuttle off in shame. Here, the figure of speech is alliteration because the sound of S is repeated. But it purrs and purrs quite proudly if you call it by its name. Here, the figure of speech is repetition because the word purr is repeated. Now, the word purr also conveys sound. So, it is onomatopoeia. But, of course, you have not seen it. And I truthfully confess that I haven't seen it either. And I don't know its address. Now, here the poet says that he hasn't seen the insect. And I truthfully confess that even we here, now, even we haven't seen the insect. And the poet, he also says that he too hasn't seen the, seen the insect. But of course, you have not seen it. And I truthfully confess that I haven't seen it either. So, of course, we haven't seen the insect. And the poet too hasn't seen it and I don't know its address. The poet says he doesn't know its address or where he where it lives. For there isn't such an insect though there really might have been if the trees and grass were purple and the sky was bottle green. So the poet here says there isn't such an insect. There is there has never been such an insect at all. Though there really might have been. So, if the trees were and grass were purple, can you ever expect the tree to be purple? 
or the grass to be purple? No. What's the color of the trees and the grass? It is green. We cannot expect the trees and the grass to be purple. And the sky was bottle green. Can you expect the sky to be bottle green? No. What is the color of the sky? It is blue. So the poet says, if the trees and the grass were purple, or the sky was bottle green, we really might have been, might have found such an insect. But it isn't there. It's just a little joke of mine, which you will forgive, I hope. So, on the whole, what is all this? This is just a little joke of the poet. And he expects us to forgive him, which you will forgive, I hope. So, the poet expects us to forgive him for all the, you know, uh, his description that he had given of the insect. Of the insect and he's made us think and think that such an insect really exists. But in the end, he says, this is just a joke of his. Oh, try, 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 auntie, won't he? Try, auntie, won't he? Bongola. Now, let's come to the literary device. The rhyming scheme, of course, is the same. In the entire poem, it is A, A, B, B, C, C. What about the rhyming words? The rhyming words are confess, address. Bean rhymes with green. Hope rhymes with try anti wanti gongola. Let's come to the figure of speech. Look at the word sentence here, which you will forgive, I hope. Here, this is inversion, as the words are not in the proper order. What is the proper order, the correct order? Which I hope you will forgive. So, this is inversion, because the words are not in the proper order. Did you all understand, children? Now, let's move over to what this imagery is. Now, Imagery is always used by poets in their poems to give us a picture, a mental picture of whatever they are describing or the idea that they are conveying to us in the poem. Now, look at this. Poets use imagery in their poems. Imagery is where language is used in such a way as to help us form a kind of mental picture of the thing that is being described or the idea that is being explored. I suppose, children, you have understood this poem, a very imaginative one. If you even try to look for this insect around, you may not find it. You know why? Because this is just an imagination of our poet, C.J. Dennis. Now here is a small activity for you. What you are going to do is, you are going to read the poem and answer questions relating to this insect. We have already gone through the poem and you know what the insect looks like or doesn't look like. Let us come to a question. What it looks like and what it doesn't look like. So the insect, trianti, wanti, Gongola looks a bit like a beetle and a little like a bee. It doesn't look like a woolly grub that climbs upon a tree. Also, it doesn't look like quite like a spider or a fly. So children here, we finish the poem. There are questions along with that which you are going to answer. Thank you children.